So maybe by this point you've already printed some nice looking lithophanes, like say for example these down here, maybe a flat lithophane or circular lithophane, curved lithophane, uh, nightlight lithophane, and you want to do something a little bit more unique. The great thing about a ceiling fan lithophane is just about everybody has a ceiling fan in their house. And right now it's probably using a pretty lame light shade that's translucent and maybe has a marbled look to it. It's not really that, that neat, but we can make it something really cool and it would only take about half of a kilogram of filament and that would be a ceiling fan lithophane. So let me show you how to design a ceiling fan lithophane using the tool that I've made available at lithophanemaker.com. Now this is not an entry level lithophane that we're talking about here. It's going to be pretty large and you really need to have a well put together maintained and tuned machine in order to print a lithophane of this size and get a high quality print. It's really not easy because larger printers are not going to be as stable as smaller printers are and you're going to need a larger printer for this. So the first thing you do is you go to lithophanemaker.com, of course, up here, lithophanemaker.com, and here's the ceiling fan lithophane tool right here, and you can click on the name, or you can click on the picture, and it'll take you to the tool. I've already pulled up the tool in another tab, and here's the ceiling fan lithophane design that I'm going to use for my own ceiling fan lithophane. So you can see that I've got four pictures in here, and then also I have the rotunda of the U.S. Capitol. Scrolling down, you can see I've chosen to crop all of the photos equally, so they're all going to have the same aspect ratio. And by selecting this, I'm able to control the diameter of the lithophane. I'm also able to control the height of the lithophane, whether I select this or if I force the diameter to be what it needs to be to maintain the aspect ratio of the pictures that I'm uploading. And you know what the lithophane resolution is by now probably. It is the distance between unique pixel heights on the lithophane surface. You can see the light gap between the side and the base right here. It's a small gap between the two pieces that you fit together that allows more light to get out. So you can adjust that light gap to control how bright your room is. Then you have the hook width, the frame width, and the frame height. You can see that the circular lithophane and the cylindrical lithophane attach to each other with these tabs that go into the side of the circular lithophane. The width of that tab is the hook width. The frame height is the height of, of this frame right here that goes from here to here. And the frame width is the width of the frame that would go from right about here to this radially outermost point right there. You have the maximum and minimum thickness of the lithophane and those control how bright your lithophane image is and how much contrast you get in it. Also, because this is being put on a ceiling fan light and you use that ceiling fan light as probably the main source of light in your room, you want to make sure that you don't make these values too large because if you do, then not much light will get through. But these values that I have here are probably a little bit lower than typical, but are close to the range that you would want to use for a ceiling fan lithophane. Now you have the space between pictures and the brightness of that space between pictures. So going back to the STL files, you can see that there is a border between each one of the pictures. This is the border right here. And you can specify how thick to make that border. So if you want it to be as thin as the minimum thickness, you make the brightness value equal to one. If you want it to be as thick thick is the maximum thickness, then you make the brightness value equal to zero. Then finally you have the number of holes, the hole diameter, and the distance between the holes. So you can see that there are two holes in the bottom of the circular lithophane, and those allow you to interface with your ceiling fan light. The hole diameter is of course the diameter of both of those holes. The distance between the holes is the distance from center to center between the two holes, and the number of holes is the number of holes. So right here I have two holes. One, two. And since I already have uploaded my pictures up here at the top, I can now decide how to crop the pictures, and you do that below. So here's where you crop the circular lithophane that's going to be on the bottom of the ceiling fan lithophane. You can change the size of the cropping circle that you see right here by adjusting this value. So you could make it 0.75, for example, and you can scoot that circle around, maybe make this 0.6 if you want to, and it moves to the right, you can scoot it up make this 0.6 and it would scoot up. But I liked it how it was because this picture is already very symmetric. 
and now the circular lithophane will look like this. And you need to think about what parts of the circular lithophane will be blocked by the fixture on your ceiling fan light. Now down here is where you crop all the pictures on the cylindrical lithophane and you just use the same process that I just previously used and then you can just create an STL file. If you have an account then you can save your settings to the account otherwise you will automatically use the settings that I have saved to my account. So you just hit create STL and it takes you down here to remind you to please cite lithophanemaker.com when you tell people about lithophanemaker.com. And a question I commonly get is whether or not you can sell lithophanes made through lithophanemaker.com. It's perfectly fine with me if you sell them and you don't have to give me anything. But you know, I've got a YouTube channel, which you're on it, and you should like and subscribe. That helps me get more views, which in turn leads to more people finding out about the website. I've also got a Facebook page where I post things, people ask questions, we get some dialogue going, um, Thingiverse, Twitter, and Instagram. Go ahead and like and subscribe to them all. And now the file is done. I actually moved it out of the way. So I've pulled Cura up, and the first thing you want to do if you haven't done this yet is go to your preferences, configure Cura, and make sure that Slice automatically is off. The reason for that is these files are very large, and if you slice it every single time that you move it around or make some other change it will take a lot of time, it will bog down your machine, it's just a pain so make sure you take slice automatically off so you can see I've pulled in the cylindrical lithophane STL file, it's got these tabs on it right here to attach to the circular lithophane and it looks like it's upside down but that's just because it's going to be printed in an orientation that is upside down compared to how it will be when it's installed on your ceiling fan you can also see all my settings over here on the right. I've gone through my settings before many times, and if you would like to find out more about those, then please feel free to watch more of my videos. I've sliced the cylindrical lithophane, and it will only take two days, ten hours cura time, and it'll take 260 grams, which really isn't that bad. That's like five dollars in filament, so it's looking like it'll be a pretty sweet deal, and I expect it to look excellent family's gonna love it so I have sliced the circular lithophane I would navigate around it but every time I try to rotate it my entire computer explodes I don't want that to happen so the gist is it's gonna take about a day and a half and it'll take about 130 grams I decided to slice it in the vertical orientation as you can see here because I expect I'll probably get a better looking lithophane out of it. And now all you gotta do is print it. Scooby Doo Snacks. Here is the final product. I thought it turned out very well. You will need to print with a more transparent white in order to keep your room bright. I'll provide some links to appropriate filaments in the description. Now check out these awesome lithophanes printed by Bernie, Michael, and DJ.